Okay, this is Conservative and Non-Conservative Forces, Parts 2. Uh, you know, I, I should have mentioned with that last one when I was doing this, that um, when I was doing the frictional force, this is like a table that we're looking down on. So the mat, it's, you know, you're, you're not moving up at all. So this is just a table, like a flat table. Whereas um, when I was doing this, this is actually the ground, and you're moving this. That way is up. That way is up, and so you, that's why you were gaining potential energy. Or excuse me, when you, that's why you were uh, the work was being done by the force of gravity. Um, that's not a small point, actually. I, I'll probably mention that to you in class too, just to remind you, or to, so that you have a heads up on that. Okay, so conservative and non-conservative forces, part two. Okay, um, the other thing about conservative and non-conservative forces is that when uh, the work done by a conservative force over a closed path is always zero. Okay, so whenever um, the, work is, the work done by a conservative force is over a closed path, it's always zero. Now, what is a closed path? A closed path is a path that starts where it begins. So closed path Watch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a closed path. If I start here, and I go like this, and I come around, and I do this, and like that, and like that, right there, and I, I stop where I, where I began, then that's a closed path. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that then. Um, once again, let's, let's call um, this way up. That's going to be up, and, um, and this way is down. And I'm going to take a, a box that's two kilograms, that's at the uh, two th two meter three meter position, and I'm going to move it in a closed path. So I'm going to move it here, to here, to here, and then to there. Finally, to to there again. Let's calculate what the work is. If this is the work done by force of gravity. And if we know gravity is a conservative force, then the work has to be zero. Okay, so let's see what it is. When I move it from here to there, it's zero joules. That's because um, the force of gravity is down and the displacement is that way. And so that's a right angle. When I move it this way, that's going to be, I'm moving it three meters down. Now this is a two kilogram box. So that's 20 newtons that the force of gravity is pulling it down with. And 20 newtons times um, 3 meters is um, it's going to be 60 joules of work. And that's a positive 60 because force of gravity is down and so is the displacement. Okay, for this path right here, that's going to be 0 joules of work for the same reason that one is. And then when we come back up, now the force of gravity is down. And the displacement is up, and so that is going to give me um, a total work done of negative 60 joules. Force, a force, 20 newtons, times displacement, and the displacement's 3 meters. So, but it, but it times the cosine of 180. So we add them up, 0 plus 60 plus 0 plus negative 60. The total work done for that path is 0 joules. So this is a conservative force. Okay, let's take a look at a non-conservative force then, like friction. Okay, with friction, we're going to um, have, this is now a tabletop, and we'll have um, a, a box or a, you know, some object here. And I'm going to again tell you the friction is, uh, let's just say it's two newtons, but it's, it's in the opposite direction of the way you move, move the thing. So I'm going to move this this way. Then this way, then this way, around a closed path, and then this way. By the way, this is not the only closed path. You could do all sorts of crazy closed paths here. But this is just an obvious one. Okay, when I do, to find the work that the friction does when, when you move the box from here to there, it's going to be um, 2 newtons times um, 2 meters. So that's going to be negative 6 joules because... Um, Frictional force is this way, and the displacement is that way. Okay, then when you come down here, it's going to be um, 
two newtons times three meters, two newtons times three meters, I'm sorry, this is two newtons times two meters, ah, four joules, I'm sorry, I'm glad I caught that on here, that's four joules, this is going to be six joules, negative, that's negative four joules, negative six joules, going across, that's going to be negative four joules, because now the frictional force is to the left and the displacement is to the right. And then this is going to be another negative 6 joules because the, the frictional force is down and the displacement's up. So what do I get when I do that? I'm going to get negative 20. The work, the total work done for that closed path is negative 20 joules. So this can't be a conservative force because it, it did work around a closed path. And if it was conservative, that should be zero joules. You see how that works? So that's what a, that's what a conservative force, uh, that's what determines a, a conservative force. Um, and the, that's the difference between a conservative force and a non-conservative force. Okay, so let me just reiterate so we have just a moment. So there's two two things about conservative forces. One is the work done by a conservative force when displacing an object from point A to point B is independent of the path taken. And the work done by a conservative force over a closed path is always zero. All right, thanks a lot.